Now, what this is going to do is that these people are going to come up, they are going to talk for a minute, because we've got shed loads of them to get through, and then they are going to pass the baton, which is the microphone, to the next person. So this is going to be a bit like an Olympic sprint, okay? So this is a bit like the Olympic sprint, and if you drop the baton, then your team loses, basically. Okay, right, so the first one, go, come on. Come on, speed, 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 oh, fast, hello, run, hello. run, sprint uh, Hi, yes, uh, my name is John Pacific. I'm a cryptographic engineer with a company called New Cipher. Uh, briefly, I'm going to speak about uh, what we're doing with threshold proxy re-encryption. Uh, we're building a de decentralized and distributed key management system for both consumer and enterprise grade. Um, and we're using proxy re-encryption to empower something called Ursula, like between Alice and Bob, where Alice will generate a re-encryption key, split it using a th a Shamir secret sharing, distribute the fragments to Ursula's of n number, and then Bob can use uh, his key to re-encrypt his ciphertext fragment for himself and retrieve an M of N and combine them. And then uh, he generates a Go. secret. <laughs> Hi, oh, I'm leave, leave this way. It's quicker if you leave that way. Yeah. Hi, okay. I'm Angel Bertini. I crafted the PDF for colliding files for SHA-1. I worked also on malicious SHA-1. I craft, I, so I like to play with file formats and cryptography. I don't understand crypto much. I crafted a PDF that when you encrypt it with triple desk, it becomes a valid JPEG, which we encrypt with AES, it becomes a valid PNG. I'm doing a PDF LaTeX package so that you can include that in all your next cryptographic papers so that they have some inner beauty. And if you have any crypto trick that you want to share, I don't understand much crypto, but if you have crypto tricks, I have file tricks. Thank you for attention. I'm Bart Prunel from the University of Leuven. Real world crypto is also about politics. And the European Commission has released a statement last September saying that encryption in Europe will not be prohibited, weakened, or restricted. But the same statement says that they're going to pay 96 extra people for Europol, that they encourage the countries to collaborate on a toolbox for alternative investigation methods. Are these zero days? Who should check all this stuff? If you want to discuss this together with Harry Halpin, the next lead project in the ECUP CSA, we have a workshop in Brussels on January 22 and 22 and 23. So in Brussels, please come and see me or Harry. We're going to discuss crypto politics in Europe. There are still a few speaking slots available. But please come and join us to discuss with the lawyers, people who discuss GDPR, people from the open source community, the commission to discuss what we should and do with crypto out. in Europe. Hello everyone, so my name is Mark Joa, so um, I just want to let you know that NXP is hiring. So we have several open uh, positions uh, in our uh, Crypto and Security Innovation Center. So we have job openings across Europe, so it is uh, Germany, Austria, France, Belgium, UK, um, yeah, the Netherlands, and also in the US. So if you want to yeah, have more information, so just please come to see me or my colleagues here. Thank you. Uh -huh. Hello, my name is Yuval Yerom. I'm uh, from the University of Adelaide, uh, Australia. I wanted to give a head up uh, on two events, if I manage to put it in one minute. Uh, the first one is KangaCrypt, that's a workshop about um, attacks on cryptography, whatever way you can break it, that's what we're interested in. It will take place in Adelaide, in the um, fourth largest uh, wine cellar in the Southern Hemisphere, um, in, uh, just after AsiaCrypt. The second is if you are not doing attacks and you still want to do cryptography around December, is Space 2018 will take place in uh, Kargapur in uh, uh, India. So we're looking forward for your words. Hi, I'm Tony Arasiri. I'm the primary author of Miscreant, a symmetric encryption library providing non-sri use misuse resistance, available in C Sharp, Go, Python. Uh, Ruby, Rust, and TypeScript. Uh, it also has a C ABI for C and C++ and plans to implement it in Java and PHP. Uh, it uses three constructions, all originally designed by Phil Rogaway. Uh, the first is AES in synthetic initialization vector mode. Uh, the second is a fully parallelizable variant of that, which substitutes PMAC for CMAC. And finally, it implements a construction called stream. Uh, so those last two constructions are offline modes. Stream turns them into online modes. 
Uh, if that sounds interesting to you, uh, check it out at miscreant.io. Hi, so I'm Catwell Cohn Gordon. So yesterday you heard about how group messaging is kind of broken. We've been looking at how to make group messaging better in the signal style. Of, in the signal style, uh, signal does continuous sort of ratcheting things, where it derives new keys and mixes them in to the root chain to derive message keys out. You can't do that naively in a group because if you go and grep through the literature for group messaging, all the protocols you find are interactive. They say, Alice, talk to Bob, get a message back, something, something, you get a key. Turns out, actually, this isn't necessary. There are non-interactive ways to derive a shared group key, and you could use that to do something kind of like ratcheting, but in group messaging. So if you're interested, Google on ends-to-ends -ends encryption. Uh, we want to build something that's really practical for people to use. Uh, so we're talking to companies as well to understand constraints and what people want to build. Uh, if you're interested, come talk to me. Hi, um, I'm George Tankersley. Uh, if you were here last year, you might have seen my talk about anonymous rate limiting using blind signatures uh, aimed at solving the Cloudflare capture problem. Uh, essentially, you can solve one captcha and receive tokens that you can redeem instead of solving future captchas. Uh, I'm happy to report that this is now a thing that exists in the real world. It's called Privacy Pass, uh, and you can go get it on the Chrome Web Store. Thanks mostly to Alex Davidson from Royal Holloway. <laughs> um, yeah, who is great. Uh, so we uh, updated the protocol from the t uh, one in the talk to use elliptic curve OPRFs, which Dan suggested literally as we were walking off stage last year. Um, and it's faster and more bandwidth efficient than you would expect blind RSA to be. Uh, so once again, that's privacy pass, and you can go download it and install it in your browser right now and solve fewer captures while you're using Tor and VPNs. Hello. Uh, my name is Marcel. I'm a product security engineer for Qualcomm. We're also one of the sponsors uh, indicated by the queue on the uh, bottom. Uh, if you're in interested in pursuing a career in product security, uh, please find me and we can talk about options. Thank you. Hi, my name is Milo Feining. I work at Philips Research. And I want to announce today yet another um, good uh, library for using uh, crypto in Python. It's called PySnark, and it's uh, for programming verifiable computations and making ZK snarks in Python. So yesterday we heard a lot about how you can use uh, ZK snarks, for instance, for privacy preserving transactions on the blockchain and for um, zero knowledge contingent transactions. But there's also other uses, and uh, the problem today is that it's quite hard to specify verifiable computations. And PySnark changes that. You can just program them in Python and automatically um, there will be a proof, and there will even be an automatically generated smart contract to verify that proof. If you're interested, go to pysnark.tk or find it on GitHub. Hi, I'm Jack Rigg. I'm an engineer with Zcash, but I also work on a little thing called I2P, um, privacy network that does onion routing stuff. Um, two years ago, I talked about our fun we had migrating away from SHA-1 um, in our signatures. Uh, we're about to do all that stuff again uh, on, for some of our other protocol layers. Um, and yeah, so if you are interested in transport layer stuff, in particular obliviousness extensions to the noise protocol or writing Sphinx packet format libraries, come talk to me. Hello everyone, I'm Nicolas Gailly, I work at TPFL, and today I want to talk to you about uh, randomness. So as you know, randomness is very hard to get, and uh, in our lab we are not happy with it. So we devised a decentralized beacon randomness, which offers um, bias resistance and uh, public verifiability. So this is called, uh, our latest advancement in this project is called DRAN. It's a software written in Go, you can check it out online, uh, github.com slash dd slash and it's already ready to use. You can spin up a few dockers and have a very good randomness. And if you want to know more about this, come to talk to me. Bye. Hello, so I'm Mark of Kohlweiss. Uh, some of you may know me from uh, being a researcher at Microsoft Research and uh, also from my work on uh, MeTLS, which won the, the Left Chimp Prize. So I'm now um, a faculty at the University of uh, Edinburgh, where I will try to bring the same rigor to blockchain and cryptocurrencies. Um, I'm here to kind of say that we, we want to hire even more faculty to work in areas like this, and um, I'm also looking personally for a number of students and uh, postdocs to work on zero knowledge, uh, SNARKs, um, blockchain privacy, and I'm, I'm also um, 
uh, interested in doing more politics now that I'm uh, at the at the university. <laughs> We seem to be doing very well, so we're now going to give the people who, who decided to come in late a little bit extra time. So they're now going to have one minute, ten seconds each. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Nigel. Um, my name's Mike Ward. I work at MasterCard. I want to say a couple of things about EMV crypto. Um, we are considering including ECC um, as well as RSA and to be obviously algorithm agile. Uh, we'd be using... Uh, Schnorr signatures for the card public key certificates and blinded Diffie Hellman for creating a secure channel. Um, I'm pleased to report that blinded Diffie Hellman has just recently been published as an ISO standard. Um, it's uh, patented, but the license is free. So that's for face to face transactions. For e commerce, EMV Curve just published the 3D Secure 2.0 specifications. They're available on the website. They basically use TLS 2.0 minimum and the Jose standard as per IETF RFC uh, 7516. Thank you. I'm Brent Zundel. I want to talk about the Sovereign Ledger. It's a global public utility for identity and verifiable claims. It's an implementation of Indy, which is a project at Hyperledger Indy from the Linux Foundation. Um, it's live. It's operating worldwide with a network of nodes running a Byzantine fault-tolerant consensus protocol. It's an anchor point for digital identity that doesn't rely on a single trusted third party or require any centralized data silos. Um, we allow verifiable anonymous digital credentials and a flow of data that puts information back into the hands of the people it belongs to. Um, the verifiable credentials that are issued allow people to selectively disclose minimal pertinent data and proven zero knowledge only uh, predicate values about their attributes. If any of this sounds interesting to you, come talk to me. Um, yeah. Hello, my colleagues and myself from Indian Statistical Institute and Sinvesta of IP in Mexico have proposed a disk encryption scheme called FAST, which is the fastest disk encryption available today with uh, provable security. And uh, it is faster than both the IEEE standards of disk encryption. But uh, moreover, we have also instantiated it for a more general scheme where the message can have a variable number of, uh, I mean, uh, it can have arbitrary length, and the tweak can have a variable number of, uh, it can be a, a vector with uh, arbitrary number of components, which is exactly the case for Aadhaar, popular Aadhaar of India, and hopefully it will be uh, considered by Indian government for Aadhaar someday. So the uh, software implementation is available in GitHub, and the paper is available in ePrint if you are interested, uh, with reference number 849. Thank you. So I'm Mike Lauder, I'm from Evernim. Giving up here is called cryptographic anxiety. Um, but I have been working on, at Evernim, a decentralized key management system that will be using Sovereign, um, where you can, users can manage their keys and create a diffused web of trust for discovering keys, rotating their keys, uh, sharing their keys, creating relationships. If any of that sounds interesting to you, where all of that is in the hands of the user and actually fixes PGP, come talk to me. Hi, uh, my name is Al Ronen. I want to talk about a joint work with uh, Moni Noor and Benny Pincus called How to Not Share a Password. We want to solve the following problem. A uh, service provider wants to find and blacklist uh, popular passwords that are used by a large fraction of its users. And while uh, still protecting the privacy of uh, the user's passwords, even if the server itself is compromised. Um, such a popular passwords can not only compromise individual users, but the whole ecosystem, like we've seen in the recent uh, Mirai attack. Moreover, uh, a malicious uh, attacker that controls a subset of the users might want to try to hide these popular passwords in our protocol. Uh, we propose a novel uh, technique for finding heavy eaters that is uh, resilient to such uh, malicious uh, adversaries. And uh, we, also, uh, we can also use this uh, 
protocol for other possible malicious setting like a, a Tor network, and we are looking for new test case. If you have something that you want to uh, collect uh, information in a safe and malicious resistant uh, manner, please contact me. The full paper is available on Inprint. Thank you. Uh, hello, people. I'm, I'm George, and I work on the Tor network. And we recently launched, launched the next generation of Onion services. It includes some fancy crypto tricks like distributed random number generation, blind DDD 25519 keys, and differential privacy for statistics. Uh, it's not like crazy like Tesla stuff, but it's uh, definitely real world and it's definitely crypto and it definitely works on the real internet right now. And in the future, we're gonna do uh, more stuff like this. We're gonna do post quantum key exchanges. We're gonna do secure name systems. We're gonna do various other stuff. Uh, if you like this sort of stuff, uh, please get in touch. I will be at the conference today. Uh, hi, my name is Astra, and um, I studied elliptic curves and modular forms, and I like crypto. So I wrote a little limerick about um, elliptic curves. Um, so I'm really nervous, but uh, there once was a smooth curve in FP, projective it is and no cusp beyond this, with a point at infinity for use in cryptography. You see, we, we prefer this kind of stuff to all this kind of stuff about, you know, cracking. <laughs> give, us some, give us some more jokes, yeah? Come on, right, go. <laughs> so I'm a bit nervous after this kind of fun stuff, but still, uh, I'm Gaurav Bansod, I'm from India, I've done a bit of work on the lightweight crypto systems, I've designed recently a new block cipher called as Anu, which means atom, uh, means which is small in size but has a greater strength. We got uh, unbelievable result that it consumes very less power as compared to the very popular cipher called as present. So it is, if just type on the Google Anu Lightweight Cipher, you'll find it's open access. And my theory is keep learning and keep bashing. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Leon. I'm with PEP, which stands for Pretty Easy Privacy. And with PEP, we want to introduce privacy by default and basically do that for email and then messaging and SMS. So PEP wants to do basically what Skype did for voice over IP, make it easily accessible to everybody automatically. And PEP is all open source with code reviews. Uh, it is multi-crypto and fully compatible with SMIME and PGP and then basically improve security from there. So for version 2.0, it's planned to integrate GNU-NET to also provide metadata anonymization. Today it's ready to pilot uh, with Outlook, Android, and Thunderbird. An iOS version is coming soon, and it can also solve issues in apps or IoT, like for example the need to have end-to-end -end encrypted messages for Swift, for example. So, some very interesting announcement concerning our collaboration with uh, GNU-PG will be coming shortly. And if you're interested in piloting or partnering, just contact me here or email me at leon at pep-security.net. Okay, so if anyone, everyone's come up and they're given like websites or people to contact or whatever, if you have given a lightning talk and some are still left, we will, uh, if you just post on Twitter, what your lightning talk was about and any contact details then everyone knows okay so use twitter as a bulletin board like oh and the hashtag is hash real world crypto not rwc remember that's the rugby world cup this is not <laughs> we could do some rugby on stage maybe not okay right off you go uh hello i'm jeff burgess hello i'm jeff burgess i uh work at inria i do some things with uh mixed networks um in particular some things around uh, trying to make the key exchanges post-quantum. That's much trickier than you would expect. Uh, come talk to me if you're interested in that. Um, also, I, I've done some work on a project called Taller, which is a uh, um, it's, a, it's a, essentially David Chom's eCash, but modernized. And, and there's a nice zero-knowledge proof in it that um, that that you that the um, that the money is not being transferred in. The, sorry, that the uh, 
that the money is not being um, transferred in some sort of illicit way. Um, anyway, come to, uh, talk to me if you're interested in actually efficient um, e e uh, anonymized transactions. All right, I'm Aguilas Kajas, and I'm at the University of Edinburgh and IOHK. So as we heard from Markov Kolvais just a few minutes ago, at Edinburgh we are hiring at pretty much every possible level. So we have an assistant professor position open, we have PhD student position open, and also postdoctoral researcher. So if you're interested, talk to me, or Markov Kolvais, or Vasily Zikas, we're all here. And next, IOHK. So we're also hiring at IOHK. If you're interested in working with real-world blockchain systems, come talk to me anytime during the day today. Thank you. These academics are always putting out job adverts. It's terrible, isn't it? I would never do that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rob Percival. I'm with a Google Certificate Transparency team. Just want to talk about an open source project that we've been working on, which currently powers a number of certificate transparency logs um, and key transparency as well. Um, so it's an extension and generalization of the ideas behind certificate transparency. Um, so it's still Merkle trees, but much bigger. So it scales up to billions of leaves. Um, the idea being that we want to be able to hold all the certificates um, ever issued and issued for the foreseeable future. But we've generalized it as well, so you can put anything in there. It doesn't have to be certificates. Um, could be binary blobs, can be public keys, uh, anything like that. You can run it in a log mode or map mode. So you can have an append-only log, which is what we do for certificates. Um, and it's cryptographically verifiable, so no what like the log operator or anyone else can't go back and delete anything or modify anything without it being obvious to like outside observers. Um, the map mode allows you to do key to value mapping. And again, you can verify that um, the history hasn't been tampered with. So for example, if you're using that for public keys for instant messaging, you can check that like your public key hasn't been changed at any point by any you know, um, attacker. Uh, you can look back and see, yes, they were all, only the public keys I knew about have been used. Um, there are plenty of use cases for this since we've generalized it. So if anyone is interested in using it for anything, uh, firmware transparency, for example, uh, come find me. Double act. Hello, I'm Nadim Kobesi from Inria Paris, Symbolic Software and Cure 53. I'm Jonas Magazinius, uh, Assured in Sweden. Great. So, um, we're together, working together, we discovered recently a vulnerability in Thunderbird and Enigmail. And if you're using PGP in Thunderbird and Enigmail, uh, you should know that on, um, until a few months ago, there was a bug that would allow for the full man-in-the-middle and decryption of all PGP traffic. Uh, this is a combination of two bugs. The first bug was actually a problem with the parser, and the second bug is a Unicode hijacking attack, uh, also known as a homograph attack. Homoglyph. A homoglyph attack. Um, but anyway, with their powers combined, they are Captain Planet, and uh, they can hijack uh, PGP. So the, the bugs were fixed, and you can read up more about the details of the vulnerability on the Enigmail website, which is the PGP extension for Thunderbird. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll just start while uh, they get the microphone back. So you, you're five people away from lunch. Um, so this is a brief announcement for the Security Standardization Research Conference to be held in Darmstadt, Germany in December 2018. So this is a conference with proceedings seeking all contributions in the area of security standards. So if you break standards, comment on standards, propose new standards, and so on. Program co-chairs are Kas Kremers and Anja Lehmann, who's running this event here. Um, call for papers will be out soon. Submission deadline will be around June. Thank you. Greg Rose from a little startup company called Allocrypt, uh, based in sunny San Diego, USA. Uh, in the real world, people like to make money out of crypto. And I don't mean Bitcoin. Uh, if there are any people out there who want to invest their hard-earned Bitcoin wealth in a startup, we're accepting, op we, we have a round open uh, for investment.
Wait a minute. If you want to invest your Bitcoin wealth in supporting next year's conference, then please let us know, and we will also accept Bitcoins to support real-world crypto. Uh, and we're not joking. We actually discussed this last week, uh, last night, sorry, to actually, yeah. So you can invest your Bitcoins in real-world crypto uh, soon. Thank you. Uh, my name is Benning Buns, and I'm from Stanford, and I quickly want to advertise uh, my, our new paper, Bulletproofs, which Andrew talked a little bit about yesterday because it can make range proofs a lot shorter, but bulletproofs can do a lot more. So they're general zero-knowledge proofs for arithmetic circuits, just like a snark. And just like a snark, the bulletproofs are short, but they don't have a trusted setup. So you don't need the whole ceremony or anything. The downside versus snark is that verification takes a lot longer than a snark. But there's lots of applications out for this outside of, of range proofs or outside of the world of cryptocurrencies. And so, for example, verifiable shuffles, or if you have any sort of more complicated um, zero-knowledge proof where you might use a Sigma protocol, you're probably better off using um, bulletproofs, which also only relies on the discrete log assumptions. So Google bulletproofs on uh, ePrint or crypto.stanford.edu slash bulletproofs, or come talk to me if you have any sort of application for this. Thank you. Yeah, hi, uh, my name is Robert, um, I'm from the University of Bochum and one and a half years ago we released the TIS attack tool TIS attacker and I only wanted to inform you that in the last one and a half years we highly uh, improved the protocol attacker and that you can check out the newest version on GitHub, TIS attacker uh, 2.3 at the moment and if you're interested in attacking TIS attack uh, implementations or just uh, uh, want to deploy your attack, uh, check it out <laughs> or talk to me. Hello. So I work for the company that is up there in the middle, ARM. My name is Roberto Avanzi. And I'm going to tell the PhD students and the postdocs among you uh, that we are hiring, both in ARM research and in the architecture team, of which I am part, we are looking for people that fulfill two requirements. The first one, you have to like scotch whiskey. The second one, you're interested in one or more of the following fields. All aspects of cryptography, especially those that might get us money. Um, architecture security, microarchitecture security, hardware security. So if you want to try something really cool, talk to me. OK. Oh, one more. One more. Oh. Oh, someone's sneaking in at the end. <laughs> it's all right, don't worry. <laughs> hi, my name is hi, my name is Manish Mehta, and I'm from Netflix. We um, we, we have a very extensive TLS uh, use inside our company. Uh, one of the things that we were bothered by was uh, the, the the failure of most of the browsers to do the name constraints in the uh, in the certificates properly. I think uh, yesterday somebody talked about. Uh, you know how our TLS clients are basically not performing the host name verification. Host name verification. One of the things you do is basically do the name constraint check. Um, uh, anyway, so we have a website called BetterTLS.com, which basically came up as as part of this frustration. We all, uh, originally wanted to name it Lame Constraints because people don't do it right. But um, it basically has a set of test suites that you can run your clients through and basically see how well you do. So hopefully that will help people make uh, uh, perform perform the name constraint uh, properly in the TLS connections. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's thank all of those speakers once more.